Hey everyone, we want to talk to you about something exciting. Later in the video, we're going to reveal what is exciting about this video. But right now, there's a lot of uh, demand, interest, uh, desire, want, wrong. Some people don't understand yeah. information out there about chicks and people wanting chicks and wanting chickens and wanting pullets and wanting egg laying hens and there's some misconceptions there's a there's a lot i mean there, there really is a lot that's going on out there right now and we wanted to clarify some of that for you now we don't raise as many chicks now as we used to um i'm gonna start this with saying that in my opinion every backyard needs four to 12 chickens. I agree. Yeah. If you're a family of four, 12 chickens is great. Now you're going to get way more eggs during the during the laying season, during peak of laying season than what you're going to want for a family of four. Um, if you've got 12 chickens, you're probably going to get 10 eggs a day. So unless your family's eating a lot of eggs, that's probably more than you want. Now, if you're eating two eggs each person, every day for breakfast then plus what you bake with or whatever 10 is about the right number right. And that also means that you need more than 12 chickens because <laughs> they don't always lay that many. and you need to be prepared for some people have the misconception that chickens lay 12 months a year tiffany do they lay 12 months a year absolutely not no most breeds you're lucky if they lay six to eight <laughs> months a year um there is a lot of breeds that will lay 10 to 12 months a year but they won't do that every year. Yeah. Um, and, and you do still have to actually feed them when they're not laying eggs. That's this. right. So that's all stuff you gotta take into account is you're gonna be feeding these these uh, chickens whether they are laying you an egg or not. Now, that being said, I also firmly believe that you can raise your chickens, feeding them scraps out of your kitchen, and supplementing their feed because when i say supplementing you're going to be buying a lot of feed because they do eat a lot uh, they do um and feed is not cheap right now um, it's expensive we just paid now we're certified organic so our chicks are certified organic and so our eggs will be certified organic probably next year um, we have never went the certified organic route on our chickens we just kept them for us but as of now we're going to go that route so we just paid $24 plus tax for a brand of feed we've never tried, but it looked good. And it's Cluck Company, Cluck and Company. Um, the ingredients looked real good, and this is certified organic. They had this, and they had Purina. Yeah. They were both about the same price, and so we thought we've had Purina before. We thought we'd give this a try. They also had some brands that we didn't want. We don't want a cheap brand. So this is a 25-pound uh, bag, and it's $23.97. So you're about a dollar a pound. The Purina Chick Starter was $35 for a 35-pound bag. So it's a dollar a pound. Yeah. So keep that in mind. It's not free to feed them. <laughs> um, and then you'll need some stuff to, to do it with. So this is a water. This is a chick water. Now, sometimes you get chicks that like to wade in this. And if you get some that won't stay out of here, you may want to put some marbles or something down in here that they can't eat to help them stay out of the water a little bit. They'll always have that trouble. Sometimes they seem stupider than others. Now, the beauty of this type of water, there's a lot of different waterers out there. The beauty of this type is it's set up for a regular mason jar, ain't it, exactly. Tiffany? Exactly. And so if you're doing home, homesteading, you probably have mason jars around. Right. Um, and you may even have some jars that you don't like to can in. So you can use them also as long as they got a mason type lid. So that works great. Tiff, you want to tell them about the feeders? So there's lots of different feeders, but we bought these <clears throat> many years ago and decided they were great for our chicks. This one actually, you put your feed in the top here and then it actually comes out of the bottom. So it doesn't make a huge mess, but it gives them just enough eating area to eat out of and not make a big mess out of. And it's small enough, we've only, you know, took for a few chicks, you know, probably somewhere between 10 to 20, this is a perfect size feeder. Because you don't want something that's huge, 
because they're not going to be able to consume yeah, that they're much. They're just going to get in it and poop in it <laughs> and make a mess out of it. Yep, and your food can get rancid, that can get bugs in it, and you don't want that. So if you get one that's smaller, you'll be able to keep up with it better. And you know, you may even want a couple of small ones, depending yep. on how many chicks you got, um, so they can <clears> all get to it. But this one works real well. We've had the flip top ones, and they work. My biggest problem with flip, the flip top feeders is they take up a lot of space, and you can guarantee the chicks are going to get on top of it and poop in it. And one of the cutest things, but the most annoying thing is the chicks that get inside of those feeders. And we have had so many of them get inside those feeders. <laughs> and you have to open the feeder and get them out. It is cute, but annoying. So we've got food, and we've got water, and housing for baby chicks up to a certain point isn't that big of a deal. You can get a tote big tote you yep, don't want a little one because they need to go to get away from the heat mm -hmm. if they don't want that much heat and you need some bedding pine shaving some people use newspaper but newspaper they can slide around on and get bow legged so pine shavings gives them a good grip um big thing though with a lot of people they miss on baby chicks is they have to have heat you can't just take baby chicks and throw them outside they have to have heat because if they don't have heat, they're going to die. Um, basically, what you can go by is from hatch period to one week old, they need to be 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And then that's really warm. But you got to think, a baby chick in a natural environment is going to have their mama hen broody and she's going to protect them under their wings. So you've got all that body heat of those mama hens. So yeah, that's what you got to Basically, have. if it's comfortable for you, it's not comfortable for them. Right. So, the next time, when you go down one to two weeks old, when they get a little bit older, you want to keep that 90 degree temperature. Um, at one to two weeks, a mama hen will start allowing her chicks out every now and then. Out she'll encourage her them out from under her wings, right. too. Right. So, they'll go out, they'll get a little cooler, and then they'll come back in and get warm again. So, and that's why it's important to have a big enough area for them to get away from the heat lamp right. because they will suffocate under the heat lamp because if they want to cool off, they can move out to the edge and cool off and most of the time they're smart enough to come back when they want that heat. <clears throat> now, from two to three weeks, you want to keep it 85 degrees. Um, it's a little bit cooler. Now, we're in East Tennessee. Today, our temperature is going to be around 77. So it feels really hot and really warm to us. Yeah, we're, we're, we're hot in the shorts, sun. But the chicks are not going to. They're going to be cold and they're, they will die if you don't have supplemental heat for them. Yep. So a little bit warmer, not quite 95, 85. Three to four weeks old, you're going to want it to be 80 degrees. Um, they're going to need that. And at night, especially, you're going to have to keep them in a warm spot so they can keep that 80 degree temperature. Now, at four to five weeks, they're going to get some more feathers on their body. They can regulate their temperatures a little bit more. So 75 degrees is fine. That being said, 75 degrees is great today, but this afternoon and tonight, that's not going to be so great. So this ain't feathers? No, this this is baby, basically baby fur. They have their little tiny feathers here on their wings, but those are not feathers. That's down, that's right. fluff. So all you got is a little chick with a little bit of fluff. We're gonna put him back in there for his buddies. <laughs> that's the surprise, by the way. <laughs> so there's a lot of things to take in care of chicks. And back to the temperature, easy way to remember that is you're bringing them down five degrees a week. You start them at 95 degrees roughly for the first week, and you're bringing them down five degrees each week they are old until that temperature reaches the outside temperature. Now, that's a rough figure. If you start seeing your chicks all hunked together like this, you know, they're gonna all of them, one. then that means they're cold. If you start seeing them scattered out and kind of lackluster, they're slumping over, then they're probably probably too hot and they're suffocating. Now, you want to say, how do I get chicks heat? Do I put them in front of a heater? Do I hook up an electric heater to them? A lot of ways to resolve that, ain't there? There is, but the best way to do this is to buy a chick brooder lamp. Now, they look like a big metal utility lamp. You can buy them at Lowe's, you can buy them at Home Depot. I wouldn't say it's the best way, it's the cheapest it's, yeah. way. And you can buy them at 
tractor supply and you'll want to get a red heat lamp for it. Now, you'll want to keep it close enough to the chicks that you can keep them warm if they want to go under there. The little thermometer comes in very right. handy for measuring but that. you also want to make sure you don't burn your chicks up right. because you can fry them and nobody wants fried chicks. And you just need, they sell a little cheap thermometer, stick your thermometer in there so you can keep track of the temperature. So, you can do that now. If you have plenty of money and you just want to spend it and pamper your chickens, Brina, well, it's sa safety yeah. too because those heat lamps can burn your bar right. barn down or or whatever because they are dangerous if you don't secure them properly. It's not. It may not. It may be Verena, but there's a few brands out there. They've actually got some chick brooder heaters. Now, what they do, they stand up and they're far enough off the ground to where the chicks can run under there when they get warm, just like running under their mama. And so, some of that stuff gets quite pricey if you're just planning yeah. on doing one batch of chicks. I mean, even like the incubators we've got, they've got the battery brooders for right. the for the chicks. But, you know, you're talking hundreds and hundreds of dollars to be able to do that. So, if you're just wanting to just raise some eggs, supplement your income. Um, this is a great way to do it. You buy your tote, you get you some pine shavings, you get you a heat lamp, you get you a little feeder and a little water, and you go buy you some chicks. Yeah. So, yeah. Just so, some of the things that people think is that it's you can raise eggs and it costs nearly nothing to raise a chicken no. that lays eggs. And that's not the way it works. And during the summer, you're going to be tickled to death because they're going to lay way more eggs than you're feeding them, more than likely if you buy the breed, uh, the correct breeds. Um, now, another misconception is I can feed them cracked corn. You can. Well, you can. But, but they're not going to be able your, to sustain your chickens and will be malnutrition right because cracked corn does not have enough to, to sustain them now that being said if you've got your chickens free ranging on pasture though they will pull a lot of protein and nutrients out of the soil because they'll eat worms and slugs and bugs and anything that comes by a chicken will eat a mouse if it can if a mouse gets <laughs> it, it, yep. to be a problem but um they'll eat about anything and um so it's, it's just, keep these things in mind. They really need a good egg layer ration once they get to the age of egg laying. Right. But to start with, they need a chick starter. And I think that's from day old till eight weeks, if I remember right. And then after eight weeks, so after that, then you're gonna put them on a, either a layer ration or you're gonna put them on a, a grower ration you can do either one yeah um so it all depends on what you want to do there so we'll probably take ours straight from the chick ration to the grower ration uh, to the egg layer ration because it's just easier um that and, and here's another thing keep in mind when you buy your chicks just buy it because it's cute we've had a lot of cute chickens over the years we re raised some of the rarest breed chickens in the world Pavlovskas and Spitzhobbins, Spitzhobbins and Russian Orlov. Russian Orlov. So, oh, that was a beautiful bird mm -hmm. too. Um, and and uh, cream crested leg bars, which those Hed are good layers. Hedamoras. Hedamoras. Yeah. Um, but some of these chickens don't lay but about sixty eggs a year. So you're only talking a little over an egg per week. Yeah. And that's a lot to feed unless oh, you're just yeah. enjoying the hobby. Uh, but that being said. Let's talk about some of the great egg layers out there. Um, the White Plymouth Rock, so a white rock, which we're gonna be adding, we had those once before. Those will hopefully be added to our flock this year again. Um, and like I said, we're, we're just doing egg layers. And um, Easter Eggers are good layers. Mm -hmm. That's really kind of a mutt. It's not really a breed, but Easter Eggers are good layers. White Leghorns are one of the best layers. Um, black ostrilorts. Mm -hmm. um, brown leghorns. We had a couple of brown leghorns at one time. They don't yep. lay as many as the white ones, but they're so much prettier. And they, they lay great. Um, Augsburgers, hard to get a hold of, but great egg layers. Yeah. Rhode Island Reds are great egg layers. Right. Barred Rocks are great egg layers. We got a couple of Rhode Island Reds in this batch. We did. We now, probably one, of your, probably one of your best brown egg layers would be the red sex link and that's 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 a cross you can't sustainably raise them on your farm but a red sex link now if you want a sex link chicken the road bar is a great choice yeah. um and, and and the or the um 
Wow. The larger one. Uh, the large. Oh, well. I'm drawing a blank. So we'll just stick with road bars for now. Uh, road bars are a great choice. Um, and by sex link, it means <laughs> that at hatch, you can tell the boys from the girls. So keep these things in mind, folks. And if you still want chicks after watching these videos, buy them. Yeah. Enjoy them. Right, right now, just started chick days at Tractor Supply. Yeah. And our Tractor Supply happened to go ahead and be feeding organic feed. So if you want to start them out that way, well, yep. Our tractor supply was already feeding them organic, which is amazing. So, so we have got. I think we am going to show you again in the video, but we've got a nice little box of pretty chickens. Now, you say, well, that looks kind of cute, but I want them to have more color. Chicks only have a basic color pattern when they're actually chicks. And their colors will come sometimes completely change. Right. A blonde chick may not be blonde when it feathers out. Exactly. Uh, and a black chick may be black when it feathers out, but it may not be all black. And a brown chick can be blonde when it feathers out. So keep those things in mind. Right. Well, guys, we say all this, say this. Get you some chicks and enjoy them if that's what you want. But don't get them thinking that they're free eggs because right. they're not there's work and there's money but like i said at the beginning of this video i think every backyard needs four to twelve chickens and some of y'all may need 24 chickens um i think that for us and our family now that being said my son wants two to three eggs a day every day um and that's every day for breakfast and that's not counting if we eat eggs and something else or like kitchen's baking for us i think we really need more like 16 chickens and that will give us excess eggs in the peak of laying, but not enough when it's not. Now, also, one other thing to keep in mind before we end this video. Now, these chicks are cute and adorable. Well, before we end part one of this video. Yeah. We've got a part two of this video that's going to be in this video. We're going to edit them together. So, one is, how long before I get eggs? It's going to be a while. Six months mostly there's a few earliest. breeds that'll lay at four and there's a few that'll lay at four and a half to five and then there's several that'll lay yeah. at five but six months and some of them are, are 11 to 13 months brahmas do not start laying until a long time down the road so you're thinking i'm gonna buy me some chicks because we have a jack trying to visit i got a cat <laughs> and he's gonna knock the camera over <laughs> if i don't watch him so if you think it's expensive to, to buy those eggs. It is. But you're also going to have to feed these guys. And buy a heat lamp. And all and the accessories to go with them. Yep. And take care of them. And there's a good chance, that, especially if you're a first or second time chicken grower, you're probably going to have chicks that die. Well, even if, you're, even if you've been doing it for years, you'll usually lose some. Right. That's so, the only reason we bought 10 today. Because we may only end up with eight, and eight's what we wanted out of this. Because we're going to add, well, we'll talk about that in another video. <laughs> we'll talk about that in the end of this video that we've already shot that we're going to edit together. So, so, is that all? That's it. All right, guys. Hey, like, subscribe, comment below this. Tell us your favorite chicken breed. Tell us why you do or do not raise chickens. And hey, share some pictures of your setup. We'd love to see what you've got going on. We we enjoy seeing what everybody else is doing. Maybe you got a better idea than we've got. Hey, like, subscribe, and share. Did I mention like, subscribe, and share? We need to grow this channel so that we can buy better equipment to shoot this stuff with so that um, we can bring you better content. Thank you. Well, hello, everybody. So we just left our local tractor supply in Jonesboro, Tennessee. We went to go get some Omri certified slug bait for our tunnels because we've had some issues with slugs. But exciting news, we've been considering getting some chicks again. We're not quite getting a ton, but we're getting some for us and we're going to probably start our organic certification on our chickens. So we were excited to see this tractor supply had chicks in. So we've got actually five different types of chicks here uh, I don't really care what kind they were they were all good egg layers all different colored egg layers and all real healthy cute little chicks this little guy is really adorable look at that little guy but 
what sold us on the idea was because we are organic farm we do have to start our chicks out as day old chicks on organic feed and so when we went to tractor supply they were actually feeding organic purina chicken or a chick starter and grower which is pretty awesome um, I don't know anybody who has ever done that as far as uh, selling chicks because it's just an expense up front. So I was quite excited. So we have chicks now, which is really cool. So two barred rocks. We've got two barred rocks, two Rhode Island, two Rhode Island, Rhode Island Reds, two Easter Eggers, two Easter Eggers, and two of what they called an Egger. Yeah, like Eggers. There was like a bluebell something or another, and they had like three or four different colors, and then there was another different one. But they all were supposed to lay really great eggs. And we hopefully will have some more like specific chicken egg layers coming from um, one of our local hatcheries in two months. But this kind of gets us started, so we're excited. Well, these guys will be laying before fall, more than likely. Right. Most of them in around five months. So the ones we got coming in two months, we got another half a dozen or so coming in two months. Um, those will be um, white Plymouth rocks, and uh, they. Uh, they won't be laying until late fall. Right. So late fall and uh, that those that makes it questionable. That means they'll probably start laying before winter. But some breeds, if they don't start laying before the day out light hours get short, they don't start laying in winter. They probably will, being that they're white Plymouth rocks. Um, they probably will start laying. But we're going to actually keep those so that we can breed a few chicks when we want to to increase our numbers. Right. We're not going to have a big flock. We're probably going to end up somewhere between 25 and 50 chicks. Yep. And it's not going to be for us like breeding and selling like we used to do. It's just going to be like for egg production. And like I said, we're going to get them organic certified with everything else. So uh, we won't actually care if there are a specific breeds. So we may even breed some of these guys if we like them. Sure. Yeah. All of these are pullets though. So these guys will not be breeding. But we'll probably but, end up with some roosters in the straight run white right. plane frogs. So, yeah. Exciting times. Absolutely. And uh, we're probably going to offer these <laughs> in uh, with our CSAs is how we're going to offer the eggs off of these. It'll be for right. us and to use in our CSAs. And if you don't know what a CSA is, you can go to our website for a better uh, look at that. But it's a, a different chick farm dot com. And, uh, but CSAs is a customer supported agriculture program and so we uh, provide a farm fresh produce box each week with our full season through all of spring and summer you get fresh produce and so we're going to offer this as an add on to that once these guys start laying in the fall yep so view of this cuteness right here in a the box they're liking the sunlight coming through Okay, so you'll know what to expect now. Thank y'all. <laughs>